Um, we have time for questions from the audience. I'm just going to ask one myself before, before we start um, to Michael. Um, on uh, May 23 and 24, there are presidential elections in Egypt. And as I understand, the main candidates are either leftovers from the Mubarak uh, era, like Amma Musa, the former foreign minister, or they're Islamists. Um, are you disappointed that they don't seem to be more um, secular, liberal, centrist candidates who seem to have a chance um, at the presidency? And I'll just combine that with a question from a member of the audience, from um, Abir Asalani of the Liberal International. She asks, the Egyptian youth were the ones who started the revolution in Egypt, but now the youth seems not to be participating in the political process. Why is that? Okay, uh, for presidential election, I, I, I don't see that we, having, we are having an election. It's, it's, it's a show, it's a play, it's a movie. It's not, not a real election. Because free elections means that, that uh, anyone can join and, and run for, for presidency, and this was, wasn't happened because the, the law of election was issued by the military, and, and they made a law which, which uh, are made specially for, for someone who was uh, with him in, in their sides. So we are having two parts uh, in these elections. One part is, is the ex-militaries or, or military alliance, and, and the other part is Islamists, and, and both are, are the same, parts of the same regime. So it, it's not an election, and, and even, even we don't have the, the, uh, the principles which, which can uh, provide the, that it is a free election without, without any fraud or corruption, because uh, we still now we don't have any, any uh, international observation over the election, and, and, and even, even the small details of the election was with the uh, conditions on running the, for the election and, and the, the database of voters. Uh, there are lots of questions about it, and, and, and for myself, uh, uh, when I see an election, which someone like Ahmed Zouil, he is a Nobel Prize winner, and he's uh, supporting peace, and he can't run for an election. Like someone like uh, Ayman Noor, and he's a civilian activist, he is a leader of the Liberal Party, and he was a former uh, presidential candidate, and he, he was very popular, and also he can't run for presidency. And, 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 and someone like Mohammed Abu Hamid, he is from, from uh, Masri al Ahrar party, uh, which means Free Egypt Science Party, and he also can't run for residency because he is under 40. So, so if they are excluding all civilian and liberal activists from, uh, from the election to make it uh, uh, just to have to choose between uh, ex-militarists and Islamists. So, so this is not a free election, and, and for myself, I'm boycotting this. And, and, and I think revolutionaries in the streets in Egypt are, are uh, uh, rising the, the slogan, uh, no presidential election under military, military governance. Uh, and, and the military should uh, deliver the power to, to a free and, and neutral authority who can run the election in, in a proper manner to, to, to make it really free. But, but according to the steps which we had in Parliament and we are having, uh, having in, in, in the presidential election next month, uh, I'm not believing it's, it's a free election. About the other question was? The question was um, that the young people in Egypt seem to have led the revolution, and yet they seem to be more absent now from the political process. Is that true, and if so, why? Okay, this is, this is the, the nature of things that uh, if the political process is democratic, every, every uh, part of the society will be represented and will be shared in, in, in the, the political process. And if it, uh, it is a dictatorship or an oligarchy, like uh, what this is in, in Egypt, so it is, it is the, natural, <coughs> the natural result of this, that uh, youth and, and liberals and seculars and civilian activists can't participate in this process because it is, it is a type of oligarchy. You have to be uh, one of their friends to, to, to be able to reach power. And, and, and look, look at the past year, uh, while me, myself, and other civilian activists were military tried and, and, and spent months in prisons, while, while uh, uh, someone like uh, Abu Zumar and others who shared in killing uh, former President Mohammed Sadat are, are becoming uh, stars uh, in, in, t in televisions every day, and, and, and nobody is questioning their, their comments and their uh, 
speeches to the, to the media and, and the opinions they are spreading and, and their funds and how, how they, uh, what is the amount of, of uh, funds they get from the Gulf, uh, uh, while, while other uh, civilian NGOs are, are, are usually persecuted and, and there are all those cases around them and, and the propaganda are attacking them every day, attack, uh, cause, um, saying that they work for external, external agendas and, and for international conspiracy over the country and things like that. So uh, if you can't have a free, uh, competing uh, environment, uh, how, how we can call it a free election and, and how we expect uh, from it as a result to, 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 be the, uh, to see that the youth who made the revolution participating in this, in this uh, process. I'll just ask one more question first. We, yeah, yeah. <coughs> what? You don't want to open? What? Okay. No, I, wait a sec. How many people want to ask questions? Do lots of people? Yeah. Sorry? Yeah, you do. Uh, okay. I'll just ask one general question while, while I'm waiting, which is to both of you. If you are um, disappointed with um, the reaction of the West, in particular the United States government, um, to Ibrahim after the June 2009 election, many people have criticized President Obama, who had only been in office um, for less than half a year, as still being rather conciliatory, rather... Um, um, too soft um, on the government. Um, he's maybe hardened since, but by not being harder in June 2009, he gave the regime possibly more time to institute the crackdown that it's continuing. And then I'll ask you first, and then afterwards also likewise, Egypt gets billions of dollars in American aid. Are you satisfied with um, the Obama administration and the European Union in their approach to um, the present Egyptian uh, authorities. But. You want to help? Yes. Okay. He's a very distinguished German Iranian uh, journalist who speaks fluent English as well as Persian. Abraham Dunn, I'm Tom. Tom, I don't pour Tom has just asked you uh, the uh, actually by not uh, reacting strongly to the Iranian government's reelection. In, uh, at the time, he gave more time for the Iranian government for its crackdown. What is your viewpoint? Well, yes, uh, Mr. Obama actually gave, uh, lost an opportunity to react to what was happening on the streets of uh, Iran, but he did he kept quiet, he kept silent. And this silence, unfortunately, allowed the government to reassert itself. Of course, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of America did re express its disagreement with the Iranian government, but it was, did not go further than that. And the greatest difficulty was that it created actually a wall, uh, uh, it, uh, the, the confidence in uh, the West uh, has uh, been weakened. This is also true for Syria. Uh, we are, the West is watching what is happening. Daily people are getting killed in Syria. And uh, what we are doing is we are witnessing. Uh, uh, government uh, of Iran can, for instance, send armaments to Syria, to the government, and this is very painful to know. 
So to just repeat for Michael, uh, the Americans, because they've been uh, close uh, allies, if that's the word, with Egypt in the last 30, 40 years, and because um, Egypt still has enormous amounts of military and, and civilian aid, um, America has a certain amount of um, pressure points on the military government. Are you disappointed that they don't appear to be using them? Okay, I can answer those two things. The first is that we can't uh, uh, be disappointed because we don't have any other solution. Uh, as, as long as this regime continues, my life and my family and my friends will be at continuous risk. Uh, and and I, I, we can't live with that fact. So this, for our safety and, and for our uh, freedom, we should get rid of this uh, regime. And, uh, and, uh, and so, so, so we don't have the choice to be disappointed. The other thing is that, that uh, anyone who supports a dictatorship will pay for it and is paying for it. Uh, when the, the United States is supporting the Egyptian army and giving it weapons and giving it military aids, uh, financial uh, aids, but, but in, in return, what happened is that the, the American organizations acting in Egypt are, are accused by the Egyptian military uh, of being spying and, and trying to, to divide the country and, and uh, uh, to, to, to destroy the country. And, and American citizens who are living in Egypt are, are at continuously risk. And, and some of them were uh, living like hostages. They are not allowed to leave the country. And, 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 and this anti-American propaganda, which running in, in, in state-owned media channels, against the United States and its, its decisions. So I think if the United States, and, and when you look uh, like uh, some lots of terrorist actions, like, like uh, uh, 11th of September, how many Egyptians were, were participating in, in these actions, and, and how is uh, the results of, of uh, Egyptian fundamentalists speeding ideas against the uh, United States. So I think uh, uh, if the United States is supporting this dictatorship, she, she's paying the price for that, and, and the, the Americans must know this. And, and the same for, for, for maybe some European countries, because other European countries were, were uh, accused with American organizations in, in the case of the NGOs. And, and, and even Israel, it, it's, it, it supported the military council in Egypt during the last year, and, and also it, it risked the lives of its own citizens, and, and uh, one of its citizens will be accused to be a spy, which is Ilan Grappel, and, and, and uh, there are the terrorists who passed to Il Ilat and, and killed Israelis. So supporting a dictatorship isn't, isn't uh, a pragmatic thing because, because you will pay for it. And, and, and this is not, not a threat and not, not, uh, not uh, my decision, but as a direct result of uh, rising a wolf in your house. Nevertheless, even if the elections were not free and fair and um, liberal and moderate groups were not given proper time to organize and proper time to campaign and proper access and so on, the Islamist parties did undoubtedly um, garner many, many votes. Um, according to the results, it's a big majority, but even if those results aren't quite clear, it's still a great number. Are you not concerned that if the military give up power too quickly, the Islamists who are um, possibly better organized and greater in number um, will manage to seize power and in fact the situation for liberals and moderates could be even worse than it is today? Okay. First of all, we can't stand against democracy if we feeling from that because uh, uh, feeling from democracy and standing against democracy wouldn't, wouldn't make it uh, better because it, it, as long as this regime continues, it's becoming worse every day. And, and uh, uh, if, if someone uh, watched the uh, picture, seen pictures for, for Egypt uh, six decades or, or maybe five decades ago, he wouldn't have uh, seen uh, this, uh, this rise of Islamists and, and Egypt was, was a secular society and, and uh, religious and, and uh, ethnic minorities were, were living freely in Egypt without any discrimination. So, so every day this, this regime uh, is lasting, it, it's becoming worse. And, and leaving it like that, it, it, it means that it will become worse every day and it won't be able, we can reach to, to the limit of no return. And, and we are avoiding this. The, the other thing I'm saying, uh, democracy is a democracy. We, we can't, we, we are not supposed to invent a new democracy. So 
Democracy means free election. Democracy means equal opportunities. Democracy means the state of law. We can't, we can't allow a terrorist to run for presidency and in the same time put a, 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 a writer or an opinion uh, a thinker uh, in, in prison for his opinion. Uh, I think that, that all religious minorities now in Egypt are, are threatened by, by a, a law which uh, is, is named insulting of religions. Uh, Karim Amr was jailed before four years because uh, a blog post he wrote about uh, criticizing Islam. And, and during the last year, several bloggers and activists were imprisoned for, for maybe a comment on Facebook or, or a picture posted on Facebook. Uh, and, and some of them are in, in, imprisoned for three years. And, and we have new verdicts with six years for, 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 for a few words. For, uh, and, and these accusations are made only against minorities and civilian activists, while, while uh, uh, fund, fanatics and Islamic fundamentalists uh, are, are, are using a very racist propaganda against minorities and, and against uh, non-believers. So uh, this is not a free environment for election. So if, if they are putting the circumstances to, to, to unfree environment, which will bring uh, a new fascism, could be a military, could be an oligarchy, could be a, an Islamic, but it, it's, it will be in a new fascism. This isn't a democracy. It's democracy is providing equal chances to every party and, and making a, 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 a new condition of, of law to, uh, which, which uh, uh, punish the, the, the criminal and, and, and uh, give, give, give the innocents their rights. I'll just ask you one more question, so the translator then afterwards I'll ask Ibrahim. It's from Marie Therese. She has a two-part question. Um, can people who are in this room, such as students and others, help you? How, how can they help you? Do you have specific practical ideas for how they can help you? And then a second question from her. On a personal note, was there a particular moment that prompted you to change your life and become an activist? Because you, you were studying to be a vet uh, before you became an activist. So, but, so just repeat, what can people here practically do? And secondly, was there a particular incident or moment that made you become an activist? Okay, I'm, I mentioned what we can uh, do in, in my, uh, the last points on, on my, uh, my speech. The first thing, we, uh, we, we have to uh, uh, say it loudly, we don't uh, let them to silence uh, activists, peace activists, freedom activists, democracy activists, human rights activists. We have uh, uh, to, to uh, publicize every, every violation happens because, because uh, anyone who makes a crime, he knows it's a crime, he knows that he may be punished because of it, and he fears from that. So if we publicize their, their crimes, they will fear to repeat it, and, and that, that's how we, we're protecting our other, other persons from being violated also. Uh, I, I think that, that every dictator fears from the uh, destiny of uh, Saddam Hussein and from Muammar, the destiny of Muammar Gaddafi and, and don't want to be in, in his position. So uh, taking, taking legal steps against, against uh, dictatorships uh, in international institutions, lobbying for that, uh, uh, speaking out loudly about these violations, well, if it couldn't uh, reach to an international uh, situation and, and uh, um, action toward any dictatorship, at least it will make this dictatorship fears from being punished, and, and this will make them uh, lower the limits of their violations. Uh, also, we shouldn't be isolated because any, every dictatorship in Iran, in, in Vietnam, in Burma, in Egypt, they are trying to isolate us from the world, uh, to, 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 uh, to let us, uh, owing only to depend on our uh, local resources without being able to contact with international institutions, with, with international activists from around the world, and, and, and uh, to, to to make sure that the regime and the government is the only representative of the people so that they can spread all, all the false opinions they, they, they want to spread about, about the reality of, of, of things which happen on grounds. So, so uh, building connections between, between activists around the world, uh, even, even uh, with, with societies with completely different uh, 
uh, in, in, in religions in, 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 in uh, political uh, directions. This, this, this connection is, 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 is a type of immunity for activists because uh, if they knew that these activists have, have strong connections, they, they will think a thousand times before arresting him or, or doing anything against him. And, and if, if something happened, these, these connections help for, for a rabid action, risking his life or, or, or at, at, li at least minimizing the, the price he had to pay for his opinions. Uh, my personal life, uh, lots of things was, was uh, disturbed and, and uh, uh, delayed during the, the months I spent in prison. So I'm, I'm spending some time uh, to, to uh, reorganize my life, recontrol my life, uh, recontinuing my studies in, in political science. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to continue as a bit. Uh, also, my movement needs to re rebuild again because it was harshly attacked. Our activists were harshly attacked by the military during the last year. Uh, so we are regrouping again and, and we are uh, providing the full support to Egyptians who are uh, asking for the right and conscientious objection to the military service who are refusing to carry weapons uh, and refusing to kill any other human being. And, and uh, these, these people are, are completely abandoned locally and internationally. And, and uh, Egypt don't uh, uh, fulfill its commitment to the International Convention to Civil and, and Political uh, Rights. So we are, we are supporting them, trying to, to make uh, their case more, more obvious and more clearer, uh, and, and give them the political and uh, legal support uh, to avoid uh, having them in prison and passing through, through the hard experiences we uh, have passed during the past days. Um, well, we just got one question for Ibrahim, and then um, there was a question from a Moroccan blog I wanted to ask afterwards. Um, it's from um, Razi Golan. He asks again about the nuclear program. How do you think um, the nuclear program, the Iranian nuclear program, might be stopped? Uh, that's his question. You did partially deal with this already, so I'll just also ask a second one, which is, are you optimistic for the future, let's say five years from now or 10 years from now? Do you think um, the Islamic Republic of Iran will no longer be an Islamic Republic? Well, the question was in two parts. The first part about the nuclear program of Iran. A part of it are news, which is in, introduced by International Atomic Agency, Atomic Agency uh, or uh, by the, about the reports of the inspectors who were inspecting it. Well, I can tell you that for the time being, it does not have nuclear weapons, because if it had already those weapons, it would already be using that card, like Pakistan, like Northern Korea, and like, like India. So it would have been using that influence now. But we, so we do not, I do not believe that Iran has now a, enough materials in order to produce a nuclear bomb. But it is making efforts to improve its knowledge, which is necessary in order to enable it in the future to have such knowledge. Yes, if it had been a very stable government, a stable state, we would all be very happy about it because that would be leading to a good development. But if we are dealing with a government which is speaking with its firearms to with its own population in the streets, that could not be trusted with such power. Now I go back to the second part of your question. I am not a specialist on blogs. I don't, cannot know what is going to happen in Iran in, even in five years' time. But people of our country are 
striving towards a stable democracy with lesser influ impact on religion, what you can find among the commoners in Iran, among the population, is not something special. In Iran, we did not look for too much. The people started walking in the street asking, what, where, what happened to my vote? Where is my vote? That was a thought. Today, yes, they would like to change the regime. But in those days, it was only asking what happened to the vote. I would be in favor of a secular government in Iran. To what extent my opinion coincides with the opinion of the population of Iran, I cannot tell you. Um, okay, because we're nearing the end of this session, um, I promised Kassam, who's a uh, Moroccan blogger and activist, he wanted to ask a question. Do you want, why don't you just come up and ask it? Thank you. Uh, my name is Kassem, and uh, Switzerland is my home of exile. I'm here, like now, a year since I moved from my country, Morocco. So I have a message for all of you here. And this message came from uh, a group of peaceful warriors who are really now fighting for freedom and for democracy. and. Uh, democracy which uh, uh, guarantee that uh, the, re the, the next constitution that we have for going to be a secular constitution, not something uh, religious as we have now in Tunisia or in Egypt. So I will read it. It's very short for like one minute. So this was written by an uh, 11 years old girl who her, 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 all her family got tortured by the Moroccan regime. It was in Arabic and then translated it to English. So, dear audience, let me tell you about Morocco. What I'm going to tell you about now is a country you never heard about before. I'm not going to talk about Marrakesh or Casablanca or Fez, where many of you might go to spend a few days in five stars hotel. But I will talk about a country where people live in toilets, where children dies, die for the freezing, from the freezing winter, where the, the doctors and PhD holders burn themselves in front of the parliament because of employment and poverty. Just a few weeks ago, young activists of the 20 February movement, the movement which came after the revolution in Tunisia as a call for democracy, liberty, human rights, and individual liberties. These activists got tortured, arrested without charges, and some others kidnapped and killed by the police in several cities of Morocco. Just four days ago, the same fascism and sadism repeats itself in Ait Bouayesh, another city in the north of Morocco, a city where the majority of, uh, where the, majority of the populations are Berber, just like me. So, so nobody... Uh, uh, a city where the majority of people are Berber, the city got surrounded by the police from all its sides, so nobody were able to run away from the organized violence, which didn't differentiate between women, children, or elder people. We have a lack of information and up uh, updates about this for the world, because the police shut down the internet coffees and no one from the journalists or even from the human rights 
activists could get to the city. This is what's happening right now in Morocco, and unfortunately, in uh, front of the silence and the, the horrible, I'm sorry, the horrible silence of international media and human rights organizations. Peace from Morocco, Sarah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Ebrahim and Michael, both of them very brave and courageous uh, young men. And that.